Hey everybody, welcome back for another edition of Grim Brothers Fairy Tales. So, I had a couple in mind for you, but they were very long. So, yeah, drop me a line, let me know if yeah, you still want me to read them to you, and I totally will. But it's small print, and they were about eight pages, so they would take a bit more time. So today I've got a fairly short one for you that might sound familiar. It's Briar Rose, or as most people know her, Sleeping Beauty. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's see how it compares. Hopefully there's dragons. In times of old, there lived a king and queen, and every day they said, oh, if only we had a child. Yet they never had one. Then one day, as the queen went out bathing, a frog happened to crawl ashore and say to her, Your wish shall be fulfilled. Before the year is out, you shall give birth to a daughter. The frog's prediction came true, and the queen gave birth to a girl who was so beautiful that the king was overjoyed and decided to hold a great feast. Not only did he invite his relatives, friends, and acquaintances, but also the wise women in the hope that they would be generous and kind to his daughter. There were 13 wise women in his kingdom, but he only had 12 golden plates from which they could eat. Therefore, one of them had to remain home. Oops. So maybe that's where Maleficent comes from. The feast was celebrated and with tremendous splendor, and when it drew to a close, the wise women bestowed their miraculous gifts upon the child. One gave her virtue, another beauty, the third wealth, and so on, until they had given her nearly everything one could possibly wish for in the world. When eleven of them had offered their gifts, the thirteenth suddenly entered the hall. Dun, dun, dun! She wanted to get revenge for not having been invited. Without greeting anyone or looking around, she cried out with a loud voice, In her fifteenth year, the princess shall prick herself on a spindle and fall down dead. That was all she said. Then she turned around and left the hall. Everyone was horrified, but the twelfth wise woman stepped forward. She still had her wish to make, and although she could not undo the evil spell, she could nevertheless soften it. The princess shall not die. Instead, she shall fall into a deep sleep for one hundred years. Since the king wanted to guard his dear child against such a catastrophe, he issued an order that all spindles in his kingdom were to be burned. Meanwhile, the gifts of the wise women fulfilled their promise in every way. The girl was so beautiful, polite, kind, and sensible that whoever encountered her could not help but adore her. Now, on the day she turned 15, it happened that the king and queen were not at home, and she was left completely alone in the palace. So, she wandered all over the place and explored as many rooms and chambers as she pleased. She eventually came to an old tower, climbed its narrow winding staircase, and came to a small door. A rusty key was stuck in the lock, and when she turned it, the door sprang open, and she saw an old woman in a little room sitting with a spindle and busily spinning flax. "'Good day, old granny,' said the princess. "'What are you doing there?' I'm spinning, said the old woman, and she nodded her head. What's that thing that's bobbing about in such a funny way, asked the maiden, who took the spindle and wanted to spin too. But just as she touched the spindle, the magic spell began working, and she pricked her finger with it. The very moment she felt the prick, she fell down on the bed that was standing there, and she was overcome by a deep sleep. This sleep soon spread throughout the entire palace. The king and queen had just returned home, and when they entered the hall, they fell asleep, as did all the people of their court. They were followed by the horses in the stable, the dogs in the courtyard, the pigeons on the roof, and even the flies on the wall. Even the fire flickering in the hearth became quiet and fell asleep. The rose stopped sizzling, and the cook, who was just about to pull the kitchen boy's hair because he had done something wrong, let him go and fell asleep. Finally, the wind died down so that not a single leaf stirred on the trees outside the castle. Soon, a briar hedge began to grow all around the castle, and it grew higher each year. 
Eventually, it surrounded and covered the entire castle so that it was no longer visible. Not even the flag on the roof could be seen. The princess became known by the name Beautiful Sleeping Briar Rose, and a tale about her began circulating throughout the country. From time to time, princes came and tried to break through the hedge and get to the castle. <coughs> However, this was impossible because the thorns clung together tightly as though they had hands and the young men got stuck there. Indeed, they could not pry themselves loose and died miserable deaths. After many, many years had gone by, a prince came to this country once more and heard of an old man talking about the briar hedge. Supposedly, there was a castle standing behind the hedge, and in the castle was a remarkably beautiful princess named Briar Rose, who had been sleeping for a hundred years, along with the king and queen and their entire court. The old man also knew from his grandfather that many princes had come and had tried to break through the briar hedge, but they had got stuck and died wretched deaths. I'm not afraid. I intend to go and see the beautiful Briar Rose. The good old man tried as best he could to dissuade him, but the prince would not heed his words. Now the hundred years had just ended, and the day on which Briar Rose was to wake up again had arrived. When the prince approached the briar hedge, he found nothing but beautiful flowers that opened of their own accord, let him through, and then closed again like a hedge. Well, and hey, we even get a picture. The you know, prince refusing to listen to the old man. If you can see that there. So, in the castle courtyard, he saw the horses and the spotted hunting dogs lying asleep. The pigeons were perched on the roof and had tucked their heads beneath their wings. Aw, so cute. When he entered the palace, the flies were sleeping on the wall. The cook in the kitchen was still holding his hand as if he wanted to grab the kitchen boy. And the maid was sitting in front of the... <coughs> in front of the black chicken that she was about to pluck. Mm, lucky chicken. As the prince continued walking, he saw the entire court lying asleep in the hall with the king and queen by the throne. Then he moved on and everything was so quiet that he could hear himself breathe. Finally, he came to the tower and opened the door to the small room in which Briar Rose was asleep. There she lay and her beauty was so marvelous that he could not take his eyes off her then he leaned over and gave her a kiss, and when his lips touched hers, Briar Rose opened her eyes, woke up, and looked at him fondly. After that, they went downstairs together, and the king and queen woke up, along with the entire court, and they all looked at each other in amazement. Soon, the horses in the courtyard stood up and shook themselves. The hunting dogs jumped around and wagged their tails. The pigeons on the roof lifted their heads from under their wings, looked around, and flew off into the fields. The flies on the wall continued crawling. The fire in the kitchen flared up, flickered, and cooked the meat. The roast began to sizzle again, and the cook gave the kitchen boy such a box on the ears that he let out a cry while the maid finished plucking the chicken. The wedding of the prince and Briar Rose was celebrated in great splendor, and they lived happily to the end of their days. Well, that was kind of a letdown. No dragons, no real drama. Oh. I was totally expecting something more grim than, eh, we just went to sleep because we forgot to invite Melissa Facent because we only had 12 plates, which seems like a bit of an, uh, you know, screw up. They couldn't come up with one more plate anywhere for, you know, somebody to make one real quick. It's not like they planned this last minute. So, hope you all enjoyed that more than I did for once I actually like the Disney version better. And... So I will see you next time, and I'm not sure what I'll read you then, but we'll have some fun. Bye, everybody.